And that gets us to issue five, our last issue, fiduciary duty. And I've got these little light cans here. Why do I have that? This is where I, I call this fiduciary duty light. Because an employee, if you think about it, really doesn't have a true fiduciary duty to the company. Right? The way that like I have a fiduciary duty to a client or a trustee of a trust has a fiduciary duty. It doesn't rise to that level. How, how, how do I know that? Well, for one thing, Texas courts have said that an employee is allowed to make plans to compete while still employed by the company. And the employee is allowed to conceal those plans from the company. So it's not a breach of fiduciary duty for the employee to, to be working for the company, to, be, to have a plan to leave, to actively making these plans and not telling the company that. Now, if I as a lawyer did that sort of thing to a client, that would clearly be a breach of my fiduciary duty, plus my ethical duties. But even if we just look at fiduciary duty. So that's why I call it fiduciary life. So what, what can an employee do and not do under this fiduciary duty life. The employee, like I said, the employee can make plans to compete, can even conceal those plans. What the, what the employee cannot do is step over the line into actually competing with the company while still an employee. That's what we saw in that previous case, right? If I'm, if I'm sending customers to somebody else you know, while I'm employed, and, and especially if I'm getting some benefit from it, then that, that's going to be a breach of fiduciary duty. And that's probably the most common type of breach of fiduciary duty that you'll see in a department employee case. All right, now my practice tip on this employee fiduciary duty and this is tiny print, but what I put up on the screen is the Texas pattern jury charge question on breach of fiduciary duty. Has anybody used this before? Looked at it? Yeah, yeah. It, but which side does this question favor, plaintiff or defense? Any thoughts on that? Anyone hazard a guess on that one? It's, if you've dealt with this before, this is a plaintiff's dream, right? Because, for example, I won't read the whole thing. But it says, to prove he complied with his duty, Don Davis must show. First of all, notice that the, it's the defendant's burden. To, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, yeah, the, def the fiduciary's burden to prove he complied with it, which kind of reverses the typical burden of proof, right? So that's number one. And then, for example, he has to prove that he acted in the utmost good faith and exercised the most scrupulous honesty. Now, if I was making plans to leave and compete, and I wasn't telling my employer, that doesn't sound like the most scrupulous honesty. So if this question goes to the jury, and I'm representing the employee who was doing that, I'm gonna have a hard time. But that's why my practice tip is, this doesn't apply to an employee fiduciary duty case. Uh, I mean, unless I represent the plaintiff, and then I, <laughs> No, but even that, I, I don't think I would even try to, 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 I'd be inviting error if I, you know, if I submitted this question. So that, that's my practice to be careful with the pattern jury charge on fiduciary duty in an employee case, because this is based on other fiduciary duty scenarios, not the sort of limited fiduciary duty that an employee has. So that's my practice tip. Don't assume PJC applies. My case for you to read, this is the last case of the day, is Orbison <coughs> versus Maddox Rope Company. This is a case out of the Texarkana Court of Appeals, and it involved a company that did wireline recertification. And here's a photo. This I just got this off Google Maps. This is one of their locations. Now, one more practice tip. If you're on the defense side of a trade secrets case and you can get a photo like that and say, trade secrets, really, Your Honor? I mean, it doesn't look real high tech or anything. It's just, you know, just a, sort of a yard on the side of the highway. But 
The issue here in this case was this fiduciary duty. And you had a situation where the employee diverted to customers to his new employer, and he did it before leaving the company. And so he was found to have breached his fiduciary duty. Uh, the, the legal issue was that, well, there were two. One was that the plaintiff asked for lost profits damages. And the evidence was, or the argument on appeal was that there was insufficient evidence to support the lost profits damages. I just want to read, Here, here's the testimony of lost profits from this case. This is counsel for Maddox, the plaintiff. Would you please just assume for me, I've done the math correctly, that the Halliburton Pinnacle and the Arclitex invoices total $3,340. And the, the representative of the company answers, that's correct. Question, and then based on that number, has Maddox then determined, then attempted to determine how much profit would be derived if they had done those two sales? Answer, yes, it was close to $2,300. Question, just to make sure our record is clear, how much was the amount that you just said? Answer, it was $2,321 is your net profits on that, on those sales. Okay, that was it. That's it. Is that sufficient evidence of lost profits? Images. What do you think? Thumbs down or thumbs up? Give me your, I see a lot, I see some thumbs down. Yeah, the, the Court of Appeals said that wasn't enough. If the, the lawyer could have asked just one more question, right? How did you get that number, right? Don't forget the how did you get that number if you're a, and maybe when, it, when it's a $2,300 case, maybe it wasn't really that big a deal. But you gotta explain, there has to be some evidence of how the figure is calculated. Okay, so lost profits damages are out. But the trial court also awarded forfeiture for the breach of fiduciary duty. And this is one of the things that is important about fiduciary duty. It gets you something that the other theories don't, which is the possibility of forfeiture as a remedy, right? Because otherwise, on these other theories, you're typically looking at actual damages, and which is typically gonna be some kind of lost profits calculation. So this is one reason why the fiduciary duty theory can be so important is that it gives you the opportunity for forfeiture. So if you represent the company uh, who's suing, that's a great uh, arrow to have in your quiver, right? There's another advantage of fiduciary duty. Uh, anybody, anybody have any ideas on what, uh, another advantage that it has over other causes of action? Well, another advantage is there is a cause of action for knowing participation in breach of fiduciary duty. That can be very helpful when you're trying to get to the company, the deep pocket, right? It, you're not just going after the employee, you wanna go after the company he went to, so that can be very useful for the plaintiff. So those are some advantages of, of fiduciary duty. Okay, so what happened in this case? The trial court said, all right, I'm gonna order you to forfeit a portion of your salary that you were paid by your employer, uh, the first employer, because you, you were breaching your fiduciary duty while they were paying you. So the trial court ordered that and ordered the employee to forfeit, uh, I think it was either two weeks, I think it was two weeks of compensation at the new company. So not only your compensation, some of your compensation from when you were at the first employer, but I'm gonna make you forfeit some of your compensation at the new employer. The employee argued on the appeal that, that this forfeiture really only applies to situations like when somebody is working on commission. Uh, the employee said, I was just on salary. I wasn't getting any direct benefit from these particular transactions that I allegedly diverted. And so I should not, forfeiture should be off the table. I'm just an ordinary salaried employee. But the Texarkana Court of Appeals disagreed. They found that forfeiture was an available remedy for an employee on salary in this situation. And so they affirmed, the, even though they, they reversed on the lost profits award, they affirmed 
on the forfeiture. Uh, a petition for review has been filed in this case. Now, it's a little, you know, it's like a $2,300 case and it's a little odd that they're making a Supreme Court case out of it. But obviously there, there's some entrenched positions here. It'll be interesting to see if the Texas Supreme Court takes that case. I mean, I would bet no just on the odds, but it does present a, a somewhat interesting issue on this question of uh, does, does this employee fiduciary duty and forfeiture remedy apply to all employees or is it just for employees who are who derive some direct benefit from the transaction? So that's that's fiduciary duty light 